Oh yeah, in this lesson of our bike service school, we're talking all about chain rings. We'll find out how is it possible that you assemble the correct type of crankset to your frame and the shifting on the lower gears just doesn't work. Or on your new bike project, you're assembling the crankset and the chain ring is not in the center of your chain guide. And right before the questions of this lesson, you will see also how I put the next two race face crankset on my frame set with the correct BB shell, bottom bracket, everything. And the chain ring doesn't work with the chain. We'll quickly learn such terms as BCD, PCD, OLD, chain line offset. But don't worry, I'm gonna make it an easy five step guide to replacing the chain rings, new and old. And step number one in choosing the correct chain ring for your crankset is the number of the teeth it will have, like 26, this one, 28, 34, 38, and so on. For example, this XT crankset is a double crankset, which means we have two gears at the front, and the setup here is 36 teeth on the larger chain ring, 26 on the smaller one. It says right here. The more teeth on the chain ring, the bigger the chain ring is. The bigger the chain ring at the front is, the more speed you're gonna have, which is the opposite to the rear, the cassette. More teeth mean lower gears, which means climbing. Less teeth mean higher speed. If you have the one of the most popular setups right now, which is one by 12 drivetrain, this one is one by 11, you will most likely have 32 teeth chain ring. It's very, very versatile. If you have cassette like 10, 52, 10, 51, 11, 50, 32 teeth at the front is very popular. More racing oriented bikes like this pure racing machine I just bought will have 34 teeth at the front and more. See, it says 34T right here but I'm replacing it with a smaller one. This is the 32 teeth, why so? Because I'm replacing the cassette which was here, it was 1052 with 1045. That's because I'm not running 51 or 52, I'm running 45 now, so I need lower gear at the front. For two by recreational bikes, uh, it will often have 32 and 22. These are the chain rings I was replacing just a week ago for my customer. And as I said, this XT is more racy. So it's got 36, 26. And one more thing, this is 29er. The bigger the wheels, the higher speed you also have. This is 27.5. So I'm running 32, 42. It's not very low, but with these wheels, okay for the uphills. But this, these are 26 inch wheels, so I'm running even 38 right there. Once we know how large the chain ring or chain rings should be, step number two is figuring the mounting type. Do you see the difference between these two? You can see the bolts on the chain ring here you don't see any on this crankset. That's because this one on your right side is so-called direct mount. That means we'll be assembling, fastening the chain ring from the inner side of your crankset. And this one is with the bolts. This is four bolt design. This is also four bolt design. This double crankset also has each of those chain rings assembled with four bolts although these are not evenly distributed throughout the circle. Some cheaper crankset will have their chain rings riveted and you cannot replace them. Not eco-friendly. So in step two, you need to know whether it's bolts or direct mount or riveted, how many bolts and how are they distributed, that's BCD in a second. And as for the direct mount, you need to know what kind of system it is. SRAM will have their own system. This is race face and it's not compatible. So in the direct mount, you need to know what kind of direct mount it is. Shimano will have their own, SRAM will have their own. 
And as for the bolts, this four bolt design will not fit this four bolt design, but it will perfectly fit this four bolt design because this and this has the same BCD. And so BCD stands for bolt circle diameter on Shimano packages. You will see PCD, which is the same thing, but it's called pitch circle diameter. It's the diameter of the circle on which the centers of the holes are located. This is the four bolt design and these four bolts are distributed evenly here. I can simply measure this distance and that's my PCD. PCD 104, PCD 104. For the three and five bolt design, please see the description. And same here on the smaller chain ring, it says PCD 64. I measured it and it's 64. It might be easier for you to measure it from the edge of the hole to the edge of the hole instead of finding out where the center of the hole is. But if you see something like 6408, 63.9, you know it's not 74, it's 64. Yet with a chain ring like this one, which doesn't have evenly distributed holes on the circle, and that's this one, that's the XT, it doesn't even say PCD or BCD because <laughs> doesn't have one. And that's when you want to match this symbol FCM1000 with the symbol on your crank arm. On the inside of your Shimano crank arm you will see the symbol FCM8000 and then I know that the chain ring I need to replace with the new one is compatible with this one. It's actually the same one. So don't worry it's not that complicated. In step two you either need to know whether you have the direct mount or the bolt mount and what kind of direct mount it is. This is the cinch on the race face, this is the SRAM or if you have the bolt mount, what's your PCD or BCD and if you don't have PCD or BCD just look at the model. Step three, you know what the bolt circle or pitch circle diameter is. It's time for the over the lock nut dimension, chain line and the offset, which are all related. Let's see the problems with my white and my chameleon bike. This crankset is fully compatible with this frame, no problem. But when I'm pushing harder on the lowest gear, this is one by 11 drivetrain, the chain will do crazy things. It wants to jump down to the second gear, it makes noises, something is totally wrong. Why is it so? Because I have wrong chain line here. Why? The crankset is okay, but the chain ring is wrong. Same story here. These teeth should be centered in this chain guide, yet they are switched or moved inwards by three millimeters. Why is it so? It's because on both bikes I have these SRAM cranksets, even though this is the 1x12, this is 1x11, and on SRAM cranksets, it's the chain ring that sets the correct chain line. That's why on the SRAM chain rings, you will see the information like three millimeters offset for boost. This is the three millimeter offset chain ring. And that means how far from the surface are those teeth shifted. And even though I have the correct crankset for the frame here, this is the six millimeters offset and by assembling this chain ring three millimeters boost offset on this bike I will be centered on the chain guide and the chain guide here is just a reference point for you to show you how it's shifted. We're talking about the correct chain line. This is why the offset of the SRAM chain ring should match the boost or non-boost frames giving us the correct chain line. And the chain line is the distance between the center of the bike, which is right here, to the center of my chain. 
and I'm sitting here at 55 millimeters. Shimano though set the chain line not by the offset of the chain ring, which is better in my opinion, but by the length of the axle. Example, Shimano Diori has three different cranksets for the same model. One is for 142 or 148 OLD, I'm going to measure that in a second, and 52 millimeters chain line. Remember, I have 55 there. The second one is for 148 OLD frames, but 55 millimeters, which means boost with larger tire clearance. And that's correct, I can put 2.4 there. And finally, the Super Boost 157 OLD and 56.5 millimeters chain line. Still, it's not complicated. OLD is over the lock nut dimension, which means the distance from the outer surface of our lock nut, this is the through axle, to the outer surface right here. On the frame side, it simply means how wide your rear triangle is, but not just anywhere. We measure from those slots for your axle. To make it easy for you guys, I disassembled another frame, all right? So this is the chain stay. These are the chain stays too, and we will measure them. I will flip it over and we measure it between those slots. I've got 142 millimeters right here. So OLD, over lock nut, 142. But if I measure it on this one, you see, I have more. I have 148 on this one. So why my drive chain doesn't work? This is the same frame. This is the Merida 96. Yes, I love them and I do race on them for years. But this is the older model, 27.5 inch wheels. And this is even older. So this comes from like 2014, which was 142 non-boost. This might be 216, which was already boost. And so I took the crank set from this frame set, from this bike, and put it on the boost bike. That's why I messed up the chain line here. What the heck with this one? Well, I bought this bike with the power meter and in order to get some money back from this pretty expensive purchase, I sold the power meter, it was Quark, and I bought really cheap new Eagle crankset, but this one came with the non-boost offset on the chainring. That's why I bought this three millimeters offset chainring for the boosted frame. And I think SRAM made it much better because I don't have to replace the whole crankset. I just swap the chain ring, which wouldn't be possible with the Shimano crankset because the crankset does set your chain line. Thus, it says here 52 millimeters, which would fit my 142 non-boosted frame with some spacers. It would also fit my 148 boosted frame because I don't have large tire clearance. You can put 225 there, but it would not fit this bike, which has 2.4 inch tire clearance and it needs 55 millimeters chain line. So it's not that complicated and I hope you'll be able to build any bike with any chain ring, but we have two steps left and these are the shortest ones. We already talked about the BCD or PCD pitch circle diameter but we also need to talk about the model itself. And it's really bad in the industry, not only bike industry, which means you can buy a chain ring with the correct BCD or PCD. And as you can see in this case, I would actually fit this Diori chain ring with the XTR. It used to be triple uh, crankset, so three gears at the front. It fits, but sometimes you will see that the shaping, this shaping right here, will be different just so that you won't be able to fit it to your crankset. Just so that you buy a new crankset. What do I do then? I do Dremel. I take the new chain ring which doesn't fit my crankset but has the correct 
BCD. I purchase different accessories for my Dremel and I simply make the cut as I need. Just make sure you don't weaken your chain ring too much, but it's, it's usually the same chain ring really with something here like sticking out so that you need to buy a new crankset. I don't. And as for the chain line on the older drivetrains, for example, you'll be making conversion from 2x10 to 1x10, you can switch it by first deciding, for example, on which side on the spider you would assemble this chain ring. As you can see, I could put it on this side and on that side. And you can also use different lengths of these bolts with some spacers if you needed to push it towards the frame more. And don't worry so much with these older ones because the chain line here is not that important because this was like three by nine or something. With the original one by 11 and even more so on one by 12, if you mess up the chain line, it won't work. And finally, my mysterious bike, which has the correct model, it would seem, the correct mounting type on the correct crankset. And that was because I wanted to replace like 32 with 34 or 34 with 32. And I bought this chain ring, which fits the crankset. The crankset fits the frame, but the chain didn't work with the chain ring because on this race face chain rings, you should have little sign for Shimano 12 speed only. You don't see it here because it's hidden behind the crank arm. It should be written here. Doesn't say here, should be written right here. It's behind the crank arm. And so I bought this one and then I figure out for the one by 12 Shimano drivetrain, I need to buy specific 1x12 Shimano drivetrain race face chain ring. And that was step five. Make sure you have the right chain ring for your drivetrain. Obviously there was a Shimano cassette here, but I'm changing something always. And we're ending with three questions. Question number one. What's the difference between PCD and BCD? Put the answer in the comment. How does Shimano and SRAM determine the chain line on their cranksets? And the third question, how do you actually measure the chain line at home? And that's it for our bike service school lesson. Thank you for watching. I'm gonna clean this mess and go for a training. Bye bye.